Hey everyone, Ben here, back for more chaos in the iRacing LMP3 Fixed Trophy. Now this is my one and only race of the week, so the pressure is on. And adding to that, we're car number one in a lower split. But having messed up in qualifying, we start P4 in a 19 car grid. Now I've seen enough of this combo this week to know it's going to be wild. Can we survive and grab a podium? And we are underway very quickly from the rolling start and it looks like I've got a driver down my inside. Marcus Herring in fifth position is towards the right hand side. He's going to have the inside line but then we've got a big dive bomb from Mark Oliver Lang behind. He has now got through and he barges me off onto the curb. I hope I haven't sustained any damage from that contact. He wasn't taking any prisoners through T1. He made it work, but I wonder if that wasn't more to do with luck than skill because he came piling in at the last moment. He could easily have taken out both Herring and myself. As it is, we all live to fight another day as we come through the inner loop for the first time, just coaxing the car through at this point. You've got to be so careful on those curbs. There is an aggressive line to be taken through there, but if you get it slightly wrong, then you're going straight into the barrier so I'm just going to be building up my confidence through that part of the track as we get into the race as the car comes up to temperature but right now I think we're down in sixth position you can see up ahead Lang just getting in too deep that's going to give Herring a chance and yes it looks as if he's got a nose ahead as we come out onto the back straight he's also going to have the high ground the inside line for the next right-hander. I'm going to try and follow Herring through here on Lang, but I'm just not able to do it. They're still side by side coming up the hill, but in the end, Herring gets the move done. I try a little switchback on Lang as well, but I can't make that work either. And it looks as if I'm going to be stuck behind him here into the end of this lap. Yes, there we go. I have to get right out of the gas through the fast left-hander. I'm surely going to come under pressure from Brian Martin behind if I can't get past but look up ahead Lang misjudges it bang into the wall he's surely going to have picked up a bit of damage if nothing else he's down on speed into T1 we start lap 2 I'm down his inside I'm very nervous he's going to chop my nose off I should perhaps have committed to that slightly more but as it is I back out and he holds the position we're climbing the hill we've got one driver up ahead who it seems came out of the pit lane this could get very messy very quickly I'm going to peel to the outside I'm hoping I'm going to get space here but look at that Lang cuts right across and that is so close to a huge accident I feel like that was right on the cusp of being a block we'll look at it again but first here's the move down into T1 on lap one and you can see actually he does very well Lang to get the car through there there is contact but it looks fair enough this one I'm really not sure about that looks like a deliberate move across very late in the day I didn't really have anywhere to go I didn't move my car at all that could could have been a huge huge crash we rejoin the live action then on lap two and you can see lang is still struggling to control that car he's out way wide there off the track and we are piling the pressure on up ahead of him herring has not gotten away so we might be running in sixth but we can see fourth place on track but all the while I'm stuck here behind these guys I'm losing touch with the podium so I've got to get my act together I've got to get a move on and we're in the slipstream once again of Lang coming down the star finish straight I'm going to shift to the inside I'm going to try and commit to this move slightly more than last time yes we're all the way alongside into the apex actually he has run it out wide I don't know if he grabbed the brakes there but he's lost two positions through that corner I'm now climbing the hill up through the S's and on to the long back straight and now my focus is on reeling in herring up ahead to try and get up into the top four I've now got to get my head down and close this gap in we're coming into the inner loop then and look at that I just take the curb too heavily the car's unsettled I have to bail out of it completely and we're just able to rejoin safely I knew as soon as I hit the curb at that angle and I felt the car unsettled if I tried to correct that immediately I would have spanned the car so I just had to be patient open the steering and trust that I could get the car slowed down and rejoin safely and I was just able to do it. 
We rejoin then on lap four, so having no sooner did I gain the position from Lang, but I lost it to Martin, and he's now putting pressure on Herring up ahead. So I'm gonna try and capitalize on that and squeeze past both drivers if I can into the braking zone. You can see Martin down the inside. That's pushed Herring slightly wide. I'm gonna try and get a move around the outside here, up the hill and into the left hand. It's not gonna work. He's just too far ahead. I'm trying to put pressure on to see if I can't force a mistake but he resists that and once again we're going to come through to the end of a lap still in this bottleneck in sixth position oh look at that though the driver up ahead running wide can i get a better run through this final corner it looks like i have i'm carrying way more momentum onto the start finish straight so this is a big chance here then we're side by side all the way into the braking zone but i'm down the inside i've got to get on the brake slightly earlier but still i've got the high ground through the corner i'm able to make the apex and not run the car out too wide and that is us up into fifth position but i've got to get some tidy laps together here if i'm going to really maximize this result and we're on to lap six and i'm still trying to put pressure on martin up ahead the gap is slowly coming down and we've built a bit of a gap to the drivers behind it looks at this stage as if the podium is out of the question We've just lost too much time in the first part of this race. As we come through the left-hander then, look up ahead. He's got it all wrong, and it looks like I'm going to be able to speed pass. Look at that, he's come back across the track. That is unbelievably close. I can't believe he didn't hold the brakes. I thought I had the space to get past. I will never be luckier than that again. Look at how close we are to being absolutely wiped out. One more time from our own board. That is incredible. Easily the scariest incident I've had in a long time. Unfortunately, having gotten past Martin then, we just weren't able to close in any further up on the cars ahead. We were running a similar pace to Ford up in third place, so we come home in P4. Potentially an opportunity miss, but as I say, that's my one and only race this week, so I'm pleased to have brought the car home. We get a bump to our I rating and to our safety rating, and we come home in P4, just outside the podium positions, but a solid run, and I'm glad that we were able to survive the LMP3 chaos at Watkins Glen. I know a lot of other drivers this week have not been able to do that. In a way, this week was all about maximizing the result that we could get out on track. And if you want help in maximizing your speed in sim racing, check out the guide that's on screen now.